to people that don't have a, a military or, or a federal background in terms of uh, how much it costs for me to have uh, medical, dental, vision insurance. And so I, I think, so I've turned those down and, and, and also gave me the ability to negotiate higher salaries because they didn't have to, it's expensive for these organizations to provide these benefits to people. Yes. And me not taking those, those insurance and coverages gave me the ability to negotiate. Like when I was able to negotiate an additional almost $25,000 uh, annual just by, by deciding not to nice. take some of those other benefits. But yeah, definitely private sector, they're starting to catch up in terms of benefits because they know that in order to keep somebody, a lot of times people are are really not looking at purely pay, but they're looking at if you got a big family, for example, or if you got family that has existing medical conditions to where if they had to pay out of pocket, that'd be a significant dent in, in their financial viability. So That's having that access. <laughs> yeah, having access to insurance is a big thing. So private sector is starting to realize that as a retention and as, as a draw to people that are, are interested in, in certain jobs. Okay, what are the benefits? So I, I'd say that 100%. And then on the public side, like my sister is in the, she works for the federal government on the civilian side. And um, they've been doing work for home since, since COVID. Now they're like in a hybrid type model to where they might have to come to work one or two days a week. Um, but work from home in the public sector is being an option is I think a great for work-life balance. I know for me, when I, whenever I'm applying for jobs or have been applying for jobs, I, like it's gotta be remote. If you're asking me to relocate number one or come into office, unless it's local like, where I can come in and, and do something like hybrid, or I don't have to like, it's like gases. I don't like paying a whole lot for gas and I don't like being on the road a lot. And if you get stuck, I don't like that. The area I'm at, it's not real bad on traffic, but I can imagine if you're in some of these like DMV areas or like Atlanta or something like that, like traffic is crazy. So working from home, having that option to to not have to deal with that. And that goes back to like just mental health. I'm like Absolutely. people that are, are are in traffic for all hours of the day and like one, two hour commutes and it's you, uh, standstill traffic for several minutes at a time and people cutting you off and you got road race stuff and then like that that weighs on your middle and you get you start looking like me where you got all these extra gray hairs and, and you're a relatively or no hair. young person or no <laughs> or no, hair. Y'all can't see it. I'm, I'm starting to this hair is starting to grow that's why i try to keep don't give away your secrets yeah hold on try, to your hair as long as you can <laughs> try, try to disguise some of this thinning hair over here in the top of my head fortunately i'm not a, a short person so i get to disguise it my wife's five feet tall <laughs> So she likes me keeping my hair, but you don't see what's going on on the top of my head. That's crazy. <laughs> but anyway, um, I digress. That's the reason why I'm still employed is because the benefits, because the medical benefits. That's the only, I, at one point I cut away and I had a, I, I had business. I was doing all right. And uh, the medical just destroyed me. So I had to go back and be in just full disclosure. That's the reason. That is the reason. And then as far as one of the reasons I stayed in the private sector is because work from home, like work from home is for me. It's if it's not work from home, that's it's a no. It's a very quick no for me <laughs> personally. 